Ti wa nkale o ati awon alejo wa e je ki apalolo eto ma bere ki olorun oba ko gbadura wa Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You have uh, introduction and recognition of dignities. This is to recognize the presence of our dignitaries present here this morning. We have the Grand Kadi of Guara State Court of Appeal in person of uh, Al-Hajj Esho Muhammad, Sharia Court of Appeal, Quora State. You are welcome, sir. We have Al-Hajj Ahmad Isa from Cameroon, and the representative of the Jamaat from the Republic of Bini, Al-Hajj Abdul Hafiz Haruna. We also have the former military governor of Obu State, the first military governor of Ogo State, I think, uh, who happens to be a member of this community in person of retired Major General S.A. Balogu. When the Grand Cadi of the Sharia Court of Appeal was uh, mentioned the mic did not sound and a lot of the members seated could not hear his salama. So I again call on the Grand Kadi to say his salama so that the entire population should answer. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu. نراهب بمجيئكم إلى هذه الحفلة. We may commence. Do you have any other dignitaries you want to introduce yeah. as they come? Yeah. Let us commence with the recitation from the Holy Quran by Hafiz Musuddin Opayemi Sahib. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا Amen. 
فكف عيديهم عنكم واتقوا الله وعلى الله فليتوكل Translation. In the name of Allah, the gracious, the merciful. O ye who believe, be steadfast in the cause of Allah, bearing witness in equity, and let not a people's enmity incite you to act otherwise than with justice. Be always just, that is nearer to righteousness. And fear Allah, surely. Allah is aware of what you do. Allah has promised those who believe and do good deeds that they shall have forgiveness and a great reward. And as for those who disbelieve and reject our signs, they are the people of fire. O oh, you who believe, remember Allah's favor upon you when the people intended to stretch out their hands against you, but he withheld their hands from you. And fear Allah, and on Allah should the believers rely. Quran, chapter 5, verses 9 to 12. As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Next is the chanting of Qasida in Arabic by Hafiz Ismail Balogun and Ustaz Nawar Ahmad.
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وهذه قصيدة عن قطر وشيكة مملوءة من اللطائف الأدبية والفرائد العربية في مدح سيدي وسيد الثقلين خاتم النبيين الذي وصفه الله في الكتاب المبين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه إلى يوم الدين آمين صلوا على محمد صلوا عليه وأهله صلوا على محمد صلوا عليه وأهله شفدو جاء بجماله حسنت جميع خصاله صلوا عليه وأهله صلوا على محمد صلوا عليه وأهله صلوا على حمادا عين الهدى مفن العدا برا كريما محسنا بهر العطايا والجادا فنهم دا يسب القلوب بغصنه يروي الصدى صلوا على محمد صلوا عليه أطلب نذيرك مالئه 
fasatanda ma anna muladada ma irra'ayna mislahu linna'imina musahida sallu ala muhammadin sallu alayhi wa alihi sallu ala Translation. This is a poem composed by Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmad alayhi salam in praise of the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Oh my heart, remember Muhammad who has been named Ahmad, the fountain of guidance, the expeller of enemies, an upright, generous benefactor an ocean of gifts and bounties, an illuminating full moon which blossoms in all attributes. He occupies a praiseworthy position. His goodness enchants hearts and his beauty moisturizes dryness. The transgressors have denied his truth with their transgression and arrogance. But the truth cannot be rejected by mankind when it appears in its full glory. Seek ye one who, who can match him in, in perfection. You will no doubt re regret doing so. Indeed, 
We have never seen anyone like him who can revive sleeping souls. He is a light from Allah which has given life to all sciences. He is the elect, the chosen, the one to be emulated by and the one to be emulated by the peace setters. The essence of guidance have all been gathered in the torrent of his glory when it is released. Time itself forgets its horizon with the glory. To Allah belongs praise after praise. We have known the leader who should be emulated. He is the right, he is the night of majesty which guarantees everlasting bliss. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Zindaba, Zindaba, Salali, Allah, Akbar. Introducing the dignities in our sitting here this morning, we have um, the representative of the Acting Permanent Secretary, Minister of Education of the State in person of uh, Al-Hajj Shulanke Abdul Hakim. Wa alaykum wa rahmatullahi We also have the chief imam of Ilaro land, Al-Hajj Tajuddin Adewumi. Wa alaykum wa rahmatullahi We have our in-house person, Honorable Abdurrahman Adebisi Yusuf of Lagos State House of Assembly, Chairman, House Committee on Transportation, Commerce and Industry. We have representing Radio Nigeria Paramount FM Abel Kuta here, representing Al Aji Bola Muibi, the General Manager. We have Al Haj Abdul Qadir Onyilola. Also, we have the Chairman Muslim Community Federal Poly, Ilaro, representing the Director of Ilaro Polytechnic, Al Haj M. A. Yusuf. We now listen to another poem of the Prophet Islam rendered in Urdu by Mu'alim Abmajid Dalil. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa sara. Jisse Hanur Sara Namuska He Muhammad Delbar Mera Yehi He Namuska He Muhammad Dil bar mera yehi hai Sab paak hai payam bar Ik dousre sabahutar 
لکزو خدای برتر خیر الورا یہی ہے نام اس کا ہے محمد دل بر میرا یہی ہے پہل تورا مہار پار اس نے ہے اتارے میں جاؤں اس کے بارے بس نہ خدا یہی ہے وہ یار لا مکانی وہ دل بر نہانی وہ یار لا مکانی وہ دل بر نہانی دیکھا ہے ہم نے اس سے بس رانما یہی ہے نام اس کا ہے محمد دل بر میرا یہی ہے وہ آج شاہدی ہے وہ تجمر سلی ہے وہ آج شاہدی ہے وہ تجمر سلی ہے وہ تیوب امی ہے اس کی سنا یہی ہے نام اس کا ہے محمد دل بر میرا یہی ہے اس نور پر فدا ہوں اس کا ہی میں ہوا ہوں وہ ہے میں چیز کیا ہوں بس فیصلہ یہی ہے نام اس کا ہے محمد دل بر میرا یہی ہے وہ دل بر یگانا علم کا ہے خزانا وہ دل بر یگانا علم کا ہے خزانا باقی ہے سب فسانا سچ بے خطا یہی ہے نام اس کا ہے محمد دل بر میرا یہی ہے سب ہم نے اس سے پایا شاہد ہے تو خدایا وہ جس نے حق کو دکھایا وہ مالکہ یہی ہے نام اس کا ہے محمد دل بر میرا یہی ہے دل میں یہی ہے ہر دم تیرا سہی فچوم دل میں یہی ہے ہر دم تیرا سہی فچوم قرآن 
Translation. That blessed and great leader from whom proceeds all the light, his name is Muhammad. And he alone is my friend, my dearest well beloved. All the prophets are faultless and holy, each better order. But coming from the Lord God, the highest and the best among them all, without doubt, is Muhammad himself. He is better far than all have gone before, in excellence like the moon. Every designing eye to him is turned, since he alone has the light and the splendor of the full moon. Those that had gone before from weariness, they collapsed on the way. He alone can steer across to the other shore. For him, let my life be sacrificed, for he alone is the captain and the master and the master of the boat. He rolled aside the veils, had come to hang between, and he pointed out the inner way. He brings you into communion with the Lord God. He is the only one that best can help you in the achievement of the supreme aim and purpose of human life. The Lord God, who stands far beyond and above the limitations of time and space, the well-beloved himself, who remains invisible, under his guidance we have seen him without, with our own eyes. Muhammad. Muhammad today is a crowned king in the realms of religion, the chiefest, the jewel among all the prophets, the healthiest influence, the poorest, the most comely, the most trustworthy, the most dependable, all the superlative praise befits Muhammad alone. Indeed, I'm sold entirely on this light, wholly and completely. I might, I'm devoted to it. In my mind, in this respect, there are no reservations. He alone is the one that counts, while I, in myself, am absolutely to nothing. This alone is the basic truth. This alone is the final verdict. The only edge that moves me, the only edge that moves me, the only desire that dominates my heart, that dominates my being, is that every moment of my life, every moment of my life, every moment of my life, I stand reverently kissing thy sacred book, the Holy Quran, in a transport of joy and devotion that I dance around it, since it is the, in truth, my Kaaba, the most vital pivot of all my hopes, of all my aspirations. Muhammad Rasulullah! Eri baba ti won ki ewu e tan sin opolopo ni omo ife ti oludasile ijo muslimi amadia azlan miza gulam ahmad alayhi salatu wasalam ti won ni si aswaju eda nabi muhammad won wa ko ewu yi ewu yi lati fi ki baba yi lati fi ki won ni anise 
Tabani ashiwaju, ohun ni ashiwaju wa. Ko loruko meji, ohun lo nje Muhammad. Tan ba ni kin wa yan fe, Muhammad la yan fe mi. Gbogbo awon anabi pata pata ni won mo kan ga kan ga ti won o labuku ti won o laba won. Sugbon ta lo gba waju nu won to koja Muhammad. Ala won o jise ti n wa lori sirisi. Won lewa e wa won po. Sugbon ko se n to lewa ta nabi Muhammad. No mo ni din bi. Te ba n wo re tiki tan ni tiki ko ni laarin awon eyan Muhammad ni nje be. Ta ba si la fe lo safi eledun mare Muhammad la le to ka fi debe. Awon ojise Olorun ba joye laye won ri podimu laarin eyan sugbon ta lo dade gbogbo won Muhammad lo dade. Ni pa oro esin ohun lo gba di esin lori Oriki ti gbogbo won fun na ni Tayyib Amin Awon oriki ti won si fun yi ohun lo mu to fi gba waju mo gbogbo won lowo Tin ba ni kin wo ni gbogbo ogba gbogbo nkan ti mo fi nso lale ni lara imole Muhammad ni Ta ba ni ta lo njo hun Muhammad lo njo hun emi o je nkan Bobo oba ni ma wa so kan mi Wi pe ani tira na to nje alqurani ki ma pon la ki ma ka bi eni to pon la bi oyin ki pari re ki pari re nitori ti ba pari qurani ti mo tun tun be ti mo tun tun ka lo to ka ba wa ni ma ka lohun to jina rere sugbon ka ba to sun mo mi ni qurani ta fi ran muhammad iwon ba ti mo le tu ninu nkan ti olujab ti le jo muslimi ahmadiya to fi yin ba ogagba asiwaju eda anabi muhammad muhammad rasulullah jazakumullah khaira we want to introduce some dignities that have just arrived We have uh, the Permanent Secretary, Government House, Ilori Kuala State, in our midst, in person of uh, Al Haj Abdul Fatah Adebiyi. Al Haj Abdul Fatah, please say your salam to the general members. Okay. When you get salam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. No more. We move to the next item. Um, I don't know whether we have any special uh, opening prayer. Pardon me. Let us pray, and we normally pray silently by our tradition, by reciting Surah Al-Fatiha, followed by the root, invoking blessings on the Holy Prophet Muhammad, and then we supplicate what is going from our last one of the Ali. A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim, bismillahi rahman rahim.
Amen. The next item is goodwill messages. I don't know whether there's any special one. Okay. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We have two goodwill messages, one from <coughs> renowned Professor Wallis Shoyinka, and the second from His Royal Highness Oba Lamidi Oke JP Oladowe One, the Alayegun of Odeomuland. I will crave your indulgence to start from the one from Professor Wally Shoyinka. He says, Goodwill message from Professor Wally Shoyinka. Dear members of Ahmadiyya Muslim Jamaat, unfortunately, I have been on a lecture tour and I'm now in the United States of America. I won't be back until towards the end of the first week of January 2015. So the visit also, that is to your conference, cannot also take place before December 27th, the day we have invited him to be here. He therefore says, maybe we can link up in January 2015, God willing. He goes on. Once again, my sincere regret on my inability to respond positively this year. With sincere hopes for an improved environment for our people in the coming year. There he stops and signs Wale Shoyinka. The second one comes from, like I said earlier, His Royal Highness Obalamidi Oke, JP Oladowe Won, Alayegun of Odeomu Land, Odeomu. Also, Giwa Adini of Ocean State. He says, Ahmadiyya Muslim Jamaat. Ilarogun State, Nigeria, message from Obalamidi Oke, Alayegun of Odeomu, to the Ahmadiyya Conference, Ilaro, 2014, Ogun State. He says, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, in the name of Almighty Allah, I, Oba Al Aji, Lamidi Oke, Giwa Dini of Ocean State, greet all participants. In this year Ahmadiyya conference, may Almighty Allah grant us eternity. My words of advice is of two folds. One, the Ahmadis are well known to possess more knowledge of Quran, and Ahmadis are known to be peace-loving people. Hence, I am using this occasion to request for prayer for peace in Nigeria and elsewhere in the world. He says, I give this challenge. Again, as good Muslims, the conference must not forget to pray to Almighty Allah to restore peace to Nigeria. A special appeal should be raised to us the so-called Boko Haram activities in Nigeria the conference is hereby reminded to pray for the nation. I have another observation in your Islamic activities on air. In the past, Ahmadiyya program, either weekly or monthly program, the Ahmadiyya mission used to announce their prayer centers on the radio. When this program in the air started, Ahmadiyya Adiyomu prayer center used to be announced along with other Ahmadiyya prayer centers in Ocean State. To my surprise, the Ahmadiyya Odeon Prayer Center is no more included whenever such prayer centers are announced on the radio. 
I am now informing the authority concerned to look at all possible ways in which Ahmadiyya or the Omu prayer center will be in the program with other prayer centers which are usually announced on the radio. I pray God that provides for other Ahmadiyya radio program will provide for all the Omu Ahmadiyya radio announcement program. Amen. In conclusion, though I'm not with you physically, but I join you in spirit, it is by prayer to Allah, it is my prayer to Allah, that 2014 Ahmadiyya Conference will not be the end. It will continue to prosper in Allah's name. I am yours in Islam, His Royal Majesty, Obalamidi Oke, Alayimu of Odeo Mulan, Giwa Adini of Foshun State. Dear Chairman, here I rest. We now move to a major duty of the conference, acquisition of knowledge, just knowledge. The lecture two is to be delivered by Dr. Saeed Oluru Timitimehi, entitled Politics, Social Justice, and Global Peace, the Dilemma of Religion. That's the main theme, the theme of the conference. Dr. Saeed, just one second. Dr. Said May is our National Public Secretary and a lecturer in the Department of Foreign Languages, Lagos State University. Ashadullah ilaha illallah wa adahu la sharika lah wa ashadu anna sayyidana muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر بسم الله على أنفسنا وديننا بسم الله على أهلنا وأموالنا بسم الله على كل شيء أعطانا ربنا بسم الله خير الأسماء بسم الله رب العرض والسماء بسم الله الذي لا يضر مع اسم إيداء بسم الله افتتحنا وعلى الله توكلنا الله ربنا لا نشرك به أحدا نسألك اللهم خيرك من خيرك الذي لا يطيء غيرك عز جارك وجل ثناؤك ولا إله إلا أنت اجعلنا في عيادك وجوارك من كل سوء ومن الشيطان الرجيم Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dear Mr. Ahmadiyya Muslim Jamaat Nigeria, distinguished Naibin Amir, the distinguished Imams, particularly the paramount Imam of Yewa land, Fadilat al Shaykh. Tajuddin Adewumi, all other protocols duly observed. I say, may the peace and blessing of Allah be upon each and every one of us present here today. The topic of this lecture is politics, social justice, and world peace, the dilemma of religion, the multiplicity of attitudes and perceptions in the modern world, and the constant flux in power politics and its appurtenances, and their impact on global social order are truly disturbing to everyone who cares about the fate of the universe. The enthronement of new, sophisticated, and globalized forms of feudal authority by so-called superpowers, as well as the internationalization of corruption and social injustice has eroded an era of unprecedented security challenges the human history has ever witnessed. It is therefore necessary to engage in a moral and mental pilgrimage 
in order to understand the enormity of the challenges posed by the situation and prefer solutions. The topic of this lecture, politics, social justice, and world peace, the dilemma of religion has attracted a number of debates from several quarters. A journalist friend of mine, one of the esteemed members of that hallowed cult of wordsmithing, also wondered whether religion can ever be in dilemma. I, of course, pointed out to him that the proliferation of terrorist attacks, as well as the incidence of violence as a result of bad governance and social injustice, cut across the religious divide. The disconnect between religious avow religion's avowed claim of being the solution to human problems and actual human actions and experiences thus put religion and its teachings in the dark. Is it that religion's claims are false or that man has misappropriated religious tenets in his conduct? This is the dilemma of religion. It, on the one hand, promotes peace and harmony, yet on the other hand, it is invoked to justify war and the worst kind of human rights violations. In the trajectory of human political theorization, man has been caught between two waves, one of political idealism and the other political realism. According to political idealists, once colonial subjugation of weaker nations ends and an era of self-determination begins, peace and harmony will prevail in the world. The Manchester School holds that once free trade has replaced conflict creating mercantilism, people will exchange goods in peace and peace will prevail. President Woodrow Wilson of America maintained that once autocratic, autocratic domestic system are replaced by democracies, the people whose interest is in peace rather than in wars will live in peace together. Karl Marx in his own works proceeded that once war-provoking capitalism yields to socialism, the classless societies that will emerge will live in peace and harmony. It is no longer news that all public expressions of all these theories have failed. What the world is witnessing in the wake is expansionist nationalism, disregarding the equal rights of other nationalities, or economic imperialism of the politically and economically stronger nations of the world, or conflicts and wars even among democratic institutions. Political realists, too, have not fared better, even though they have not matched the ideological totalitarianism of the idealists. They have acknowledged the diversity of human societies and the multiplicity of cultural dimensions that should guide the formulation of policies within them. Yet, they have ignored the ethical dimension. With the failure of all human theories, therefore, we are challenged to locate religion into the interplay between politics and social justice and our good governance, and how the good governance that will naturally result therefrom translate into global peace social justice, meaning, and scope. Generally, social justice is described as a system that guarantees the basic necessities of life to all individuals within a society without any kind of discrimination. The most common indices include free distrib a fair distributions of resources, equal access to opportunities and rights, fair system of law and due process, ability to take up opportunities and exercise rights, protection of vulnerable and disadvantaged people. Recent history testifies to the fact that all the conflict-stricken regions of the world today have long histories of social injustice. There is indeed no place on earth where there is war or strife, where visible signs of social injustice had not been seen before the crisis. The ugliest forms of social injustice omnipresent in Nigeria today no doubt account for the various ethnic, communal, and religious crises in the country. Where access to the basic necessities of life is denied, violent actors will always be recruited easily. Niger Delta crisis and the current Boko Haram saga 
are typical examples because man is a political animal and apart from that it is inextricably a part of man's nature that when he is taken care of when the society takes care of him he becomes a friend of the society students of political science understand very well the concept of social contract we were told that there are two basic contracts between man and the society you have the first social contract which is called the pactum unionis that, that is the pact of living together within a defined territory as citizens but the strongest and most important social contract is the second social contract which is called the pactum subjectionis that is a pact of subjecting your authority to a group of people to rule over you when they take care of you you become a law-abiding citizen when they don't take care of you you become an enemy of that society and that is why crime is referred to in psychology as antisocial act anti-society man becomes an enemy of the society when the society does not take care of him and that is why john locke is reported to have said that every man is a potential criminal a man is only law ab abiding when the society takes care of him when he's given the wherewithal to actualize his potential as a human being but when the society does not take care of him he turns against the society and the only prophet Muhammad has given us a very beautiful allegorical de 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 depiction of this phenomenon the prophet gave us the story uh, the allegory of people traveling in a boat he said they cast lot among themselves the lot of some picked the lower deck of the of, of the boat and the, the the lot of the others picked the upper the upper deck and the lower deck the prophet has come to ask for those who are in the lower deck anytime they needed water they tell those on the upper deck you know when you travel in a boat and it has a lower and upper deck those at the lower deck will not see the water it is only those on the upper deck that will see the water so the prophet said those at the lower deck anytime they needed water they will tell those above them and they will cast a bucket into the water and draw water for them but if those at the top do not bring this water as at when due or if the water they give them is not enough for them those at the lower deck may be tempted to say why do we have to disturb these people after all we are closer to water let's make a hole in this boat and draw the water ourselves and the prophet Islam said in when they do that halaku jamian all of them will be destroyed that is a simple portrayal of the social dynamics that control human society recent history similarly all of the countries affected by the arab spring have tales of social injustice preceding them from tunisia to morocco to egypt to even bahrain to syria you discover that prior to the time all this crisis started they, are, they have had very long histories of social injustice in those societies i remember very well that in 2011 even in saudi arabia the people of saudi arabia were about to react you know they wanted to respond to what was happening in the other arab nations they set aside one friday which they called yaumul Ghadab, the day of anger but for the timely uh, pragmatism of the rulers in saudi arabia they quickly liberalized some institutions in the country to prevent them they knew these things ought to have been there all some certain positions that had been raised and that had been reserved only for the members of the royal family were quickly you know they made new appointments and people, new people were appointed into offices and they were able to down the tension however because in, the, in most of the gulf states because they are better off economically you do not find this crisis there as you have in other parts of the arab world it is therefore not because america or any other country has uh, as uh, you know has penetrated their political system if they attempt to